Hey you guys, how are we doing? The sun is genuinely trying to come out. We have had four days of solid rain. The ground is saturated. I'm standing in this little patch of baby stinging nettles, unable to feel my knees at present, but that is absolutely fine because today we are talking about the Osprey Levity. This is a super lightweight, brand new backpacking release for 2018 by Osprey Packs, and I'm pretty stoked to have got my hands on one. So it comes in the 45 and the 60 liters. You've got small, medium and large. This is the only color. I think it's like aluminum gray or something like that. I don't really remember, um, but it's kind of white and I think quite impractical for the trail. But if you would like a genuine detailed breakdown review of this rucksack, then there's a link below. And if you also wanted to compare this rucksack with the Osprey Exos and the Osprey Asia, which have both been released or you've had new releases of those rucksacks this year alongside the Levity, then again, I've done a separate video for those all in the link below, hoping to just break down everything so you can find the information that you need. And if you're looking to get a new pack or considering this one, then you should be able to make a decision, hopefully off the back of watching those videos. So what we're going to be doing today then is unpacking and repacking this rucksack. Now there's two points I'd actually really like to highlight before we get started. First of all, this is not my rucksack. This is my friend's rucksack. He is much taller than me, so he has the large frame. It's considerably too big for me, um, but I still just wanted to look at the rucksack itself, so the main feet, the main sort of how much stuff you can fit in. And what I have done is I've taken everything I could comfortably need for five plus days on the trail, um, but I have not packed it how I would genuinely pack it if I was on the trail. So you can see my tent, for example, is right here. The reason why I've done this is so that you can see kind of how the pack looks when it's completely full up and get a feel for the different sizes of all the different pockets and just genuinely everything that you can fit in here in this is the 45 litre pack. So just really wanted to highlight that. Don't take this as a guidance of how I would pack my rucksack. Just this is genuinely the sorts of stuff that I would take. So you can see, first of all, I got a bit scared there. The rucksack does not stand up. Uh, that's because there's no sleeping pad straps on the bottom and I often find with my tent, which I tend to put on the bottom, that then means that the pad, the, the pack can be freestanding. But we've not got that here. So you just need to consider if you're in pretty damp conditions, like here I suppose, then letting the pack fall, you know, you've got potential of, of water getting in there. So it's just something to, to have a think about. But, <coughs> excuse me, what we're gonna do is just work our way through all the pockets, take stuff out, and then super speedily, you'll get to see it and fast forward. I'll put everything back in so you can see how it all kind of fits together. So then starting with the front pocket. <clears throat> this is a non-stretchy pocket. Uh, some, like the Exos, for example, has mesh, so you can fit a lot more in here. But you can see the genuine sort of size of it. This is with the pack full up. And what I've got in here, sticking out the top rather glamorously, is my Hilleberg Acto. This is a one person tent, pretty much like a TARDIS. And I take this everywhere I go when I backpack. It fits, it's just really good for four season sort of camping and I love it. So if you'd like a separate review of that, again, links below, that's my Hilleberg Acto. Poles and pegs for that are in the side pocket here. So I've got them nice and accessible. Just means I can get my tent up or certainly get the outer up, get everything in so I'm staying nice and dry if the weather's pretty drab bit of a bit of breeze coming then on the side here on the other side I have two water bottles these are three quarter liter aluminium bottles and they just tend to be what I take on the trail and then I've also got in the side pocket here a compass because there's no hip pockets or hip belt pockets on this rucksack there's no sternum pocket now I could keep it in my pocket obviously I wouldn't be wearing jeans um, but I just like it to be accessible when I'm on the trail even if it is following a well signed posted sort of national trail. It's just very helpful for me. I like to just check my sort of orientation every so often. So that's my compass. I put it there for now. And that is, it's in a little pouch. So compass. I think that's everything on the side pockets. Yes, it is. So on the top of the rucksack, there is only one pocket. There's no internal upper pocket. There's just this one. And so what I've put in here is tissues. These would normally be in my hip belt pockets, but alas, there are none. So that's where I put them. I have some hand gel. If you do a wild wee, always helpful. <laughs> I've got this little dry bag, which has a phone charger or a portable charger anyway. It's got some cash in there and my keys. And then I have a little pouch, which has my head torch in. 
This is the Petzl Actic. I love this head torch. I bought it last year. Separate review on that. I always flip around one of the batteries to ensure that it's not going to turn on when it's in my pack. And then also in this little pouch, I've just got some spare batteries as well. I have a waterproof cover. Many Osprey packs, this one included, do not have an inbuilt waterproof cover. If that's something you're used to, then you need to stop being used to that. <laughs> uh, basically, Osprey sell separate waterproof covers. Now, I do actually really like these because they clip around the back and it just ensures it's never going to blow off. Because a lot of people just find it such a faff with the elastic. Uh, as soon as you get a slight breeze, you're getting blown away with a parachute. But this really ensures that that's not going to happen. So I have a waterproof cover there. I have a tube of bite and sting cream. I have some electrolyte tablets. So I put these in my flask. They just added some flavoring. I put a bit of caffeine in there and then ensuring I'm getting my minerals as well. There's some multivitamins. And then the last thing is, I think, yep, uh, some deep heat. I genuinely take a lot smaller tube than that, but I have a trap injury and that's just there as a precaution, if anything. So that's everything in the top pocket for now. Let's unclip this one and get into the main compartment. Exciting times, if I can anyway. <laughs> Here we go. So what have we got? First thing then, bright red, can't miss it. This is my mountain equipment Lohotse jacket, waterproof jacket, pit zips and everything. <coughs> Excuse me, got a dry throat today. Um, and that is a piece of clothing that I absolutely love. If you'd like a separate review on that, again, link is below. Next thing. These genuinely I would normally have in the front pocket, but this is a, and I'd also have them in a dry bag, a bag with an example of some gloves and a buff. And there's a spare hat in there. Although I actually wouldn't have that spare hat if I was wearing this hat, just this hat would be in the bag, but it's just all representative. So that's that. Then I have this jacket, which I'd actually probably wear most days. If not this one, something similar. This is a sort of very, very lightweight Primaloft jacket that I just wear every single day when I'm on the trail. So that would probably not be in there because I'd be wearing it unless I'm absolutely sweating it out on the trail. I really love this jacket, it's arcteric. It's got sort of breathable pit zips and yeah, that's what I'd wear when I'm out and about in the day. Okay, next up then is a thicker jacket. Sometimes I tend to put this in a dry bag if I know I'm out in winter, either that or I just cram it in any gaps that, that are left in the pack. This is again, a sort of primer lofty jackety thing sometimes i wear this at night i wear it as an extra layer i can chuck it over my waterproof as well it's it's big enough in order to do that so if i stop i can just whip it out and put it on uh, that's that's just a regatta jacket and i actually genuinely love this jacket it is pretty old school really lightweight as you can see it doesn't pack down all that small but it still it does the job for me so that's that one and then also nice and accessible waterproof trousers these burkhouse waterproof trousers and some ankle gaiters which are just cheap ones but they all do the same thing so that's that and then this oh just got to be the best thing in the pack really isn't it this is my food bag <laughs> so what i've got in here as i say it's really not important this is this video but i'll just explain briefly i've got some dehydrated ration packs there you go see the packaging there i have oh that smells good <laughs> i have some golden syrup or golden maple or whatever it is porridge sachets i've got some coffee things and just some cereal bars and stuff to see me through a few days on the trail i just wanted to put some stuff together so you can see what that sort of looks like when it's it's all put together next up is this yellow beast so this is some spare clothing and uh another hat actually that i would sleep in it's woollier it comes down over my ears and under my chin uh, it just just gives me that bit more insulation <coughs> Excuse me and i have another sort of jumper in there that again i would wear on in the day if it was a bit chilly and that's pretty much it some very very lightweight shorts to sleep in and a very thin t-shirt but that's it as you can see it's still quite bulky i haven't quite squeezed the air out of that but that's my clothing bag which would sustain me for a week or so next up is my first aid kit this is my mountain first aid kit kind of compartmentalized into sort of tablets and stuff and dressings really want to highlight that i would not have that as far down in the pack as I currently have it, but it just fit best in order to cram everything in for now. So first aid kit. Sleeping mat. So this is, what is this? This is a Thermares Venture. It does not hold its air very well anymore, but I still use it because I love it. I am loyal to Thermarest, and that is the sleeping mat that I would use. So it adds my insulation when I am sleeping. Next up, this is all coming out in a very random order. 
is my jet boil. Yeah, this is this is a good thing as well. You can't really have the food without this. So this boils water in two minutes. It's freestanding, nice and compact. Uh, I've got a spare lighter there in case. Always good when the lighter doesn't work. I need to change that <laughs> in case the, the button thing doesn't work. But there we go, I need to sort myself out a bit. And then I've got this little, what is this? A bowl, there we go. <laughs> a little bowl that sits in the bottom and it just that just works for me. So I can put, sometimes I bring things like couscous and my porridge as well. I can put that in there. Sometimes I'll have a cup, a mug, an extra thing, but it all depends, you know, luxuries and all that. <coughs> Up next, little wash kit, just got a compact towel in there and things to wash with. <coughs> Excuse me again. And then this is a bivy, this is an optional extra, but I do tend to bring it, especially this sort of time of year where it can be quite humid and wet and snowy, it can be anything. This is a bivy, this is an Alp kit bivy. I can compress that down quite a lot. Basically, I tend to put that over my sleeping bag and it just means that if there's condensation in my tent, which is actually, can be a big issue with the Hilleberg Acto, uh, it just keeps me dry and it keeps the down protected. So that's why I have that. Also extra insulation because the sleeping bag I've put in here, which is the last thing, is a sort of transitional <laughs> sleeping bag. So I wouldn't call it a winter one, nor would I call it a summer one. Um, so especially during this time of year, sort of springtime, it's, that's just going to add a little bit of extra insulation around this sleeping bag. So that is everything then that I would put in the Osprey Levity. You saw what it looked like, now you can see what it looks like empty. You can see this massive colourful objects that have all come out. So what I'm going to do just really quickly in fast forwards for you guys is put everything back in so you can just see how it sort of went and then uh, I'll leave you to make your own conclusion as to whether this is the pack for you. There we go. Everything's back in. This, folks, was the Osprey Levity, 45 in the actual large sort of size. Hopefully you've got a feel for everything you can sort of fit in there. Again, if you'd like to watch a detailed review of the actual pack, what makes it good, what makes it bad, what makes it the Levity, then check out the link below. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>